This week on 7 Minutes with Matt, I'm going to talk about how to keep your relationship still current and burning with your spouse, even if you've been married for 17 years like me and together for 20 years like Terry and I. Terry and I first met in 2001, and we are now in 2022, so I guess that's 21 years. And um, we've been married now for 17 years. We have four kids. Three of them, as you know, were born with a rare genetic disease called cystic fibrosis. We have had parents pass away. We have gone through uh, losing our house, losing our cars. We have gone from the mountaintop all the way to the valley. So we really have gone through a lot of seasons in life. But one thing that has not changed with my wife and I is that we have not faltered from our vows and our commitment to each other personally, spiritually, and even sexually. One of my favorite hashtags that I post is hashtag no vows broken. I honor my wife. And I think that's such a lost commodity in today's world with marital, uh, with, with, with marriage is people forget their vows or lose value in the vows that they gave. One thing I constantly try to do is win my wife over. And of course, I'm not going to sit here and say I, I, I do it every day. I mean, I still mess up. But on the big stuff like uh, infidelity or lying or stealing, stuff like that, when it, when it comes to deep, deep trust issues, those for me are non-negotiable. And, you know, talking about divorce, like that was never even a joke for us. It's never even a consideration. Going back a couple years, Terry and I have gone to counseling. We have definitely gone to marital counseling and it helped us a lot because like any marriage, you go through seasons, you go through highs, you go through lows, you go through sickness, diagnosis. And I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, I'm going to talk about myself here. I ain't as attractive as I was when I was 25, when she met me, you know, being uh, 40, 2001. So I must've been, no, I was 22 two when she met me and I'm 43 now. Uh, I don't have hair anymore and my beard is grayer than it was. And, uh, my football body is now a dad body. So, uh, <laughs> how do you keep your wife interested? Well, here's what I've learned with Terry and I, Terry is driven with acts of kindness, with acts of service. She loves when I do the things that she asks me to do. And some of our biggest fights are just when I don't do what I said I was going to do or when I don't do what she asked me to do. For me, my big love language, if you will, is, is admiration. I love when my wife tells me good job. I love when my wife tells me I look handsome. I love when my wife pursues me, if you will. And I'm just going to be honest when it comes to the lovemaking part or the sexual part, you know, a lot of times as the man, I have to be the initiator, which is fine. But uh, she definitely and she does a really good job at this. And this is a tip for the ladies out there. My mom gave her a book when we got married. It was called Fascinating Womanhood. And a couple things, and she read it, and it's a very old school book. So if you're a feminist or a hashtag me to her, you probably ain't going to like the book because it definitely embraces fascinating womanhood, how to keep your man interested, how to keep your husband wanting to come home and not go to the bar after work, not go to the ball game or hang out with his friends. I can honestly say Terry has done such a good job at making our house a home, our family a unit, uh, her as a wife attractive, that at the end of the day, I want to come home. And a couple key points that it said that she still sticks by, which is awesome, is it says, don't let the kids bombard the husband right when he walks in the house. Give him 30 minutes to decompress. And she does that for me. And on the off, and again, we're not perfect. On the off days, when that doesn't happen, she sees my tension, my frustration go through the roof when, you know, little Sam comes in and dad, why didn't you get me this? And you know, whatever it is, she does a really good job of trying to keep the kids kind of, you know, don't bug dad for about 30 minutes. And the other thing she does, which is awesome, is every night we go to bed, she smells amazing. Uh, she sprays this body spray or something. And it's not like, trust me, we ain't having sex every night, but she, every night she smells good. 
she puts on a little light lip gloss. And again, it's not a sexual thing. It's just keep your man interested thing. And I could honestly say, and this is a tribute to a couple factors. It's a tribute to my wife doing a really good job of keeping her husband interested. And it's a tribute to my relationship with Christ is that not only have I never cheated on my wife and my wife has never cheated on me, but I could say I've never even been tempted to cheat on my wife because I know if I cheat on her, I'm cheating on God. I'm cheating on my kids. I'm cheating on our future. And I'm also sleeping with or buying into something that's not real. That's not mine. That's not God's best for me. And I only want God's best because God's best is better than we can even ask, think, or imagine. So when you live from that perspective on both sides, on the female side and the male side, on the relationship side with Christ and on the relationship side with your spouse, when you live from that perspective, it is a complete game changer in your marriage and in your relationship. Do we have all of our ducks in a row? Absolutely not. Are things perfect? Absolutely not. Do we still argue? Yeah, we do. And for those of you who know me, I'm such a passionate guy. Like I'm a yeller. Like I yell sometimes. Not bad, nothing crazy or anything like that. But like my point is, I'm not perfect, but we live with that perspective and it keeps things interesting. I can tell you from a sexual standpoint, like, dude, I still get butterflies in my stomach knowing that tonight might be the night that it's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, and that's because she stays current. We don't do the same thing every single time. And that's a tough subject for a lot of people to talk about, especially Christians or believers like you might want to get a little outside of the box in your sexual life. And I'm not talking about anything weird or dirty or gross like that, but it's okay to be kinky. It's okay to be a little naughty. Like one of the things my mom told me, and some people might get grossed out by this, but I thought it was super cool. And my time is up. So I will end with this. What mama told me is mom said, Matthew, once you're married, you can swing from the rafters if you want to, because it's you and your wife and nothing else. I hope that this seven minutes with Matt helped you level up this week. Have a great week.